morning, boys and girls. We need to be on our very, very best behavior. We have a very special presentation for you today. We have uh, the Kickapoo Tribal Education Department with us today, so let's give them a big hand, a big welcome. As you will know, we are, uh, according to the Texas legislature, we are designating the last Friday in September as American Indian, Indian Heritage Day in Texas. So, good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. And we're very excited to be here today, this morning, with all of you. It's a real honor to be here, especially to recognize and honor our Native Americans in this community. I know that the, uh, this year the state of Texas has also declared uh, Native American uh, Month. We usually do this in the month of November, December, because that's when the federal government and uh, Mr. Obama, they also recognize Native Americans in our country. But we're very honored and we're very uh, grateful to have our own Native Americans in our community, and they are the Kickapoo Traditional Tribe of Texas. Give them a round of applause to honor and recognize Native America. Again, I want to recognize uh, uh, people that are, uh, that are with me today. And uh, my name is uh, uh, Jose Gallegos and I I'm, I'm work for the Kikapu tribe. I am the uh, GED teacher and recruiter. That means I teach students that need help in school, either uh, elementary, junior high, and high school. And I also provide help for those that need to go to college or in college already. Kikapu heritage. The Kikapu Indians once lived in the Central Lakes region. When first encountered by French explorers in the early 1640s, the Kikapu Indians were still living in the region between Lakes Michigan and Erie. By the 1960s, conflicts with the Iroquois nation over access to hunting grounds, rich in fur-bearing animals, had driven the Kikapu Indians to seek refuge in what is now known as Wisconsin. The Kikapu Indians are an Algonquin-speaking group of fewer than a thousand individuals that make their home in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and nor northern New Mexico. The Kikapu Indian self-reliant attitude set them apart from other Native Americans. For generations, this traveling life provided the Kikapu with adequate substance while helping maintaining a self-government. By the mid-19th century, the Kikapu Indians who journeyed through Texas and Mexico lived in isolation. Our ancestors have been successful at preserving much of the traditional Kikapu way of life and are the largest of the Kikapu tribes. The Kikapu adjusted to the new life by joining the alliance of native tribes living in northern Texas, in which later proved to be unsuccessful. The group were not able to live in harmony. After the Texas Revolution, Republic President Sam Houston attempted to rescue peace in the frontier by offering a treaty that would, give, that would have given land grants to the tribe alliance. This treaty was never approved and, and in 1838 violence erupted in Nauro country causing tension in the frontier. By 1839, the Kikapu fled from the Texas Republic into Mexico or Indian Territory. However, the Kikapu ancestors continued to cause this harmony for Texas by collaborating with Mexican military, serving the new country as a border lookouts. In return, this service and the, the Mexican government awards the tribe 78,000 acres of land near Zaragoza and El Remolino. In 1852, the Kikapu traded the land grant for 17,352 acres of at El Nacimiento near Mosquis, establishing a permanent Kikapu presence in northern Mexico. To this day, the settlement remains home to, of today's Kikapu. Many Kikapu sold their lands and moved to rejoin relatives in Mexico. This unsatisfactory uh, situation, recent immigrants were considered to be contaminated by the Western culture and not allowed to join the principal group. With, with nowhere to go, they settled in, in Sonora, Mexico. Mexico, my bad. By the 1920s, after complex legal procedures, members regained their atoll lands in Oklahoma. Today, Nacimiento remains home for most Kikapu and is recognized by the Oklahoma and Kansas group as the origin of all that is truly Kikapu. On January 8, 1983, Public Law 9742-429 resolved the ambiguous land situation. Under this statute, the Kikapu were officially and identified by the United States authorities as the Texas Band of Oklahoma Kikapu. The Kikapu did not legally hold title to land in Texas until 1986. We resided near the international bridge between Piedras Negras and Eagle Pass and have long been identified with Texas. The Kikapu tribe of Texas is known for their retention of traditional culture. 
Today we are approximately 800 members in which some of us spend time in El Nacimiento located 135, 130 miles southwest of Eagle Pass to retain our traditional lifestyle. The Republic of Mexico and the United States of America have granted the Kikapu dual, dual citizenship in both countries and the privilege to seek employment as well. In closing, the Kikapu remains among the most traditional of all North American groups. We thank you for being here today and, learn, and learning about our Kikapu heritage. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Yes, I'd like to take this time to thank the Kikapu tribe for supplying us with a wonderful presentation. They did uh, inform us about their culture. They did a, a wonderful dance for our students. Today has been designated by the Texas legislature as a day to celebrate our um, um, Native American, Native Americans in, in uh, the United States. So again, we were very uh, lucky to have the Kikubu tribe here and to give us this wonderful presentation and we really enjoyed it. Thank you. What is the dance represent? It represents the animal we're imitating. How long it takes you to build the house? Um, at least uh, four days, at least. And I can see Julio, he's really sweating a lot, you know, that takes a lot of <laughs> all the dancing, so. And next question, oh, I forgot to, what's, what is your name, you know? I forgot to ask your question. Jose Vallejo, thank you, Jose. That's a very good question. How old are they when they start dancing? Um, at least 10 or younger. Uh, we, uh, it's actually taught about our ancestors, the way we dance. Well, I think those are very important questions to all three of them. Uh, and I think that uh, hopefully all of you really enjoyed it today, this morning. And that's just the presentation. Thank you very much. You were a great audience. You know, we're on a weekend. Thank you very much.